hot dogs in outer space, far out. Just this previous summer, hot dog patient warming became the only patient warming system trusted by NASA as it lifted off on the SPX-25 Dragon launch vehicle and headed to the International Space Station. It was a very exciting time for, uh, for us as a company, although the intergalactic market for patient warming isn't substantial at this time. Uh, we're still quite excited to be uh, the only patient warming system uh, trusted by NASA. The due diligence that they use for getting any piece of equipment on their uh, capsule is uh, pretty substantial, as you can imagine. Uh, and I kind of viewed it as sort of like uh, the right stuff, but a little bit nerdier uh, than, than, uh, than that awesome movie. But nevertheless, uh, we, uh, we ended up on the space station for some experiments. And, uh, and you might ask yourself, why? Why would NASA uh, want a hot dog patient warming on the International Space Station? Why would they want air-free hot dog patient warming? And, and that is the, the key right there. Um, so I'll give you a quote from NASA that, that might, uh, might be a clue. Quote, it is a, indeed a strange new world on the ISS. Hot air that doesn't rise, heat that doesn't conduct, Radiators too cold for liquid water. It's enough to give a thermal engineer gray hairs. That's from NASA's uh, article, Staying Cool on the ISS from 2001. So convection does not work in outer space, at least not in the way that you would expect. Now on Earth, uh, a, a hot air uh, displaces a cold air and becomes less dense and because it's less dense, uh, the force of gravity is able to pull that cold air down, hot air rises, all right? So we, we experience hot air rising and uh, you don't have to be uh, Mr. Joshua to know that hot air, in fact, does rise. Mr. Joshua, your left arm, please. Crazy, man, come on, man. Now, the International Space Station actually has a condition called microgravity. We would probably commonly call it zero gravity, but uh, it's actually uh, a little bit more complicated than that. But uh, in a microgravity environment, uh, hot air uh, does not convect in the same way that we would think of on Earth. It just sort of sits there and builds up and gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So you can imagine with a forced air system, if that were on the International Space Station, uh, that would, it would effectively build up heat, build up heat, build up heat, and that heat wouldn't be dissipating, wouldn't be convecting. Um, also, the ability to, to transfer heat becomes uh, screwed up uh, with convection in, in outer space. However, a hot dog luckily does not use uh, blowing hot air. Instead, it uses radiant and uh, conductive uh, heat transfer, and, uh, and that's uh, just ideal uh, for the International Space Station. It's also a much uh, a lower energy usage and, and, and that was, was quite appealing to them. So um, we'll show you in future videos how forced air warming uh, on Earth, actually the hot air does rise and how uh, it and is able to contaminate the sterile field. Uh, furthermore, how uh, the, the thinking of the forced air manufacturer is that the hot air does not rise. Uh, now that you know this, detail about patient warming in outer space, you might think that the, the forced air manufacturers are, are kind of far out in the way that they're approaching that. For more about the strange thermal challenges that NASA faces on the International Space Station, uh, click on the link in the description below, and uh, there's a great article that uh, might be eye-opening. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on Hot Dog Patient Warm.